return to the Super Eagles and it's a massive Christmas Day matchup in the NBA as City rivals and top contenders Lakers and Clippers face off in LA with superstars LeBron and Kawhi holding center court. It's the Christmas Day edition of Sports Express brought to you by MTN. We'd like to thank you for joining us. We kick off short. <laughs> Good morning and Merry Christmas everybody. I'm sure a lot of you are enjoying Christmas in bed, but for some of us, like Buki and I, we have to be here. We'd like to thank you for joining us. We wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. We start off with International Newsreel. Here is Pedro Peter. Thank you, Dave. Merry Christmas. We start off with the Olympics, where the Russian Olympic Committee has ins insists it expects its athletes to take part in the Tokyo 2020 Summer Games under their national flag, despite the four-year ban for doping. President of the Russian Olympic Committee, Stanislav Osniakov, stated the country is still a rightful member of the Olympic movement and will put a team together for the Games, as well as doing everything in their power for the team to perform under their flag. Rosada revealed last week it will appeal the ban to the Court of Arbitration for sports. Meanwhile, the Indonesian National Olympic Committee reveals it plans to send more athletes to next summer's Games in Tokyo, despite securing only three slots. To tennis, organizers of the Australian Open have revealed the prize money for the 2020 edition has been increased to £38 million. Pounds. The overall prize fund for the first major of the year went up by 14%, with players who exit the first round receiving £48,000, 20% more than last year, while monies for losers in the opening qualifying round is up by a third, amounting to £10,000. The tournament, which begins in Melbourne on January the 20th, will see the singles champions in each category go home with a total sum of 2.21 million pounds. Lastly, to cricket, Pakistan all-rounder Mohamed Afiz has been handed a ban for bowling in all English domestic competitions due to an illegal action. The 39-year-old the 39-year-old was reported by umpires after a T20 blast match between Middlesex and Somerset at Taunton in August, with the suspension imposed following a bowling review group hearing at Lords. Afiz played 40 20 games for Middlesex last summer taking two wickets and hitting 115 runs with a high score of 48 runs. Five games in the NBA on Christmas Day. Milwaukee Bucks play Philadelphia 76ers. Houston Rockets against Golden State. Would have been a marquee matchup at the start of the season, but hey, things have turned awry for Golden State. New Orleans Pelicans play Devon Nuggets, Boston Celtics against Toronto Raptors. Should be an exciting game as well. And of course, the peak of the bunch. The Los Angeles Derby at the Staples Center between LA Lakers and LA Clippers. It's going to be LeBron against Kawhi. That game will go a long way telling us whether there will be a power shift in LA. We return after the break with the Nigerian sports scene. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Christmas Day edition of Sports Express brought to you by MTN. Bull Omani steps in for the Nigerian sports scene. And Bull, well, the stories come out that um, Odion Igalo has debunked rumors that he was planning to make a return to the national team. Can you tell us about it? Um, the word he used was rubbish. He rubbish. Um, yeah, he talks of him coming back to the national team is rubbish. And I like the fact that he said it is a norm that everybody wants to participate, especially when the team is doing well. But I love the fact that young players have stepped up, they are playing so well. And he also he said he talked to uh, Osimhen sometimes and encourages him. I like the fact that Osimhen is getting him the goals. And, and like you, but everybody has said, Igalo is gone. Let's move away from that chapter. And I think uh, Igalo has not even scored up the 20 goals for the Super. I think 15 or thereabout. And 12 was during this Afcon qualifiers and the Afcon itself. Mm. Then imagine what happens. Like maybe he missed the sitter like he did at the World Cup. And all got no, for, for me, that he even. I respect Igalo for one thing, that he came, he back, came back from that World Cup debacle yeah. where he had to shut down his, I think it was the Twitter handle or yeah. Instagram handle, but he had to shut it out because of the torrent of abuse he got from fans. We, I think, at times, well, not at times, it's completely unnecessary. For him to come back from that and to have done what he did, both in the qualifiers and at the Nations Cup, speaks to the mark of the man. So, if he says he's retired, He's retired. He's done well. We will remember him positively for what he did for the national team, despite a few hiccups here and there. So, 
I really don't know why this team and I was an article from from a tactical perspective. I honestly think the team has moved on from Igalo. The team now play more fast attacking football like mm. they are having Igalo up front. Fast, fluid, and all of that. I don't think it will fit into that system again. But I feel hey. like they retired on the high. Exactly. When they look up the mm. tournament, then you step down. Okay. Uh, we hope that story stays. That, anyway. um, all right. Um, you have something for us on Amar Jupinik and the Super Falcons? Um, he was at the Asato Shala uh, Foundation for Girls that did that. Oh, yes. And, and uh, I think he was quizzed about the Super Falcons coach, CJ. And he said, the NFL are walking around the clock to get a quality coach for the uh, Falcons. You know what I don't, I don't like about those things, eh? Really? They've not made any statements. It was because he was at an event and he was asked. You know, that's why there was a statement. It's not like the NFL came up and... But the moment somebody criticizes them, there's a full... Uh, how do you... There's a full press release countering what? The situation... In fact... The, what was his name? The the yeah. coaching situation, every situation. It was until we heard Derby's name somewhere before people explained what, go, what what was going on. I think um, sometimes the NFL needs to understand when to hold a press conference with customers. It doesn't even have to be a press conference. Just sit. Communication release. Yeah. You release this thing, Terrible West criticized, the whole press release came out. But when they, there are issues to do with Nigerian football, you don't see anything. But you, uh, you are so quick to react to criticism. I remember you know? um, when um, the issue with Denebi was supposed to come for a meeting with um, the sport minister. Of, we didn't know anything, and the rumor was Denebi said this. There was no real response to was Denebi right? Was he saying the truth or not? The only thing we knew was this. Uh, when, even when the reports of him getting a job in India came with initially and he denied, and the still didn't say anything. And like Riley said, if he was not at that event, maybe we never would have heard. No, it was, it was because it was at that event. It wasn't at that event. No statement would come about Super Falcons or coach or anything. No statement would have come out. And I'm sure it was because reporters asked him specifically about the Super Falcons. That's why it came out. And the interesting thing is, the um, Super Eagles coach, the case is still on. Like I tell people, New Year is seven days away now. So then um, General has the right to talk to anybody from January if no contract is available. You know what I think? Hmm? They Honestly, want. they don't want to renew that contract. And they are not, I hate to use the phrase, they are not mad enough to come out and tell the man, we don't want to renew your contract. Because when you start, you want to start giving conditions you didn't give the man at the start of his contract you want to start giving him the conditions now it's obvious that maybe there's something going on and what i don't like is come out you have a right to tell the man you want to take swagos in a new direction even if we disagree with it and we don't want to renew your contract but hey, point, it's uh, cat and mouse they're the, playing games the technical competition the technical yeah. competition has been more yeah. than nearly <laughs> dead for a decade <laughs> what, what, don't let me say decade for like three or four years <laughs> indeed you pull them out when you need them. Just that they pull out some ex Super Eagles players when they didn't to criticize another Super Eagles player who criticized them. After the break, the World Soccer Report. Welcome back. It's the World Soccer Report on Sports Express brought to you by MTN. What would we do without the English Premier League <laughs> at the time? Like, well, first, let me see what we do without the NBA because there's some exciting NBA yeah. games today. And tomorrow, Boxing Day, when we all thought it was going to be boring. You know, they play on Boxing Day and they play on New Year's Day as well. Great stuff. Um, Great stuff for this. Well, the we, players, we, could learn it. we could learn the a thing or two. We could but. learn a thing or two in Nigeria from that. It's the first two season. Mm. People are at home. Looking for places to so go. We like to. holiday too much, my <laughs> the, the players and the officials and the refs. We like holiday too much. Nobody will want to do that. But it's a good point. It's a point to actually consider. So let's take a look ahead at some of the fixtures for Boxing Day. In the Premier League, of course, the big one is Leicester City against Liverpool. If Leicester lose this one, I think the, you think the Premier League is done and dusted. Although, even if, if it's not done and dusted already, Ready. you know, yeah, but it's a huge step, a very huge step for Liverpool. Uh, that puts them about 13 points clear, if I'm not mistaken. If they win, yeah, that's mm. what they do. Have a game, game in hand, yes, that would be a huge step. Uh, but I still think Liverpool were somewhat. Close to this position last season, mm. and then still lost. You know, I always say there's a difference in being chased and a di there's and a difference being, in and being the one doing the chase. Really chasing, yeah. So it's a different mentality. Yeah, so we have to still keep. But what do you say though? Um, to some who have said there might be some tiredness from the club World Cup, <laughs> extra time they played and all of that. But I think he has enough of a good squad to deal with that. But 
Should Leicester win? What does that do? That opens up everything. Uh, the league goes to seven points. Then uh, so along the line, you have City lurking. Mm. Uh, and this will be a huge chink in the armor for, for Liverpool because then everybody will look at them and say, okay, these guys are not as invisible as we thought they were. And who knows? It might lead to a run of, of bad results for Liverpool. But then we can't say that for, for sure. But a huge step for Leicester. And then uh, City can also, you know, slow blood mm. and be like, okay, mm. we, can, we can get a run of it. But then how Liverpool react from a defeat will be very, very negative. Because they haven't lost in a while. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, some of the other fixtures. Uh, Spurs, Brighton should be an interesting game from a footballing should, perspective yeah. uh, because Brighton have been playing really well. And Brighton is this season. them in the first game. How yeah. worried are you? Well, you're not buddy, but how worried are you about Aston Villa? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going <laughs> to Norwich. They have to win this game. They have to. Uh, but Norwich have also kind of bounced back. Yeah. Puki has found, you know, scoring boots again. Villa have to just find some way to consolidate. I think for a team that just came to the Premier League, they are not winning enough games at home. Mm. You need to, as much as possible, try to win games at home. And then maybe you get the odd draw away from yeah, you. Yeah. But I think Villa should get the result uh, at home to Norwich. Okay, we, we shall see. Now, let's move away from the pitch and talk about two, two latest managers in the Premier League. What should Everton expect? From Carlo Angelotti, and then from Carlo Angelotti's perspective, he's always handled quote unquote top teams. Yeah. This is the first time he's probably handling a mid level, probably even lower oh, wow. kind of team. What does that do to his mindset? He has to go in there with, uh, with a very open mind. Mm. Open mind in the sense of this is the team I have to work with for the next six months. Yes, January comes along, he might be able to get one to play. I won't be surprised if he goes to. Yeah, I'm going to be very good. are free agents very soon. So by January, they can't talk to anything. So he has to go there with a very different mindset. Open my look. Consolidation is very critical for everything. If they can finish in the uh, in mid table, it's fine for them. So he has precision to handle the team. Now, the difference between Napoli and Everton is Napoli. I've been there or there. Yeah, they haven't won the title. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But at least they've come second a few times. Even with him at the helm. And then they played in the Champions League and got some big scalps. Yeah. What I know a lot of Everton fans will be looking forward to will be the Versus side Derby. Mm -hmm. Probably their first chance in a long time mm -hmm. to push the Liverpool all the way because, hey, he's defended Liverpool back to back seasons in the Champions League. Yeah. They had that before. For Arsenal, first yeah. I said that. I thought he might not be the man for this job. Mm. Well, I could be wrong. But for us, I'm I, You know, when assistant managers take over, mm. or someone you're used to as an assistant manager take over, take over a job, you really don't know what to expect. And yeah. not all assistant managers make great managers. Mm -hmm. With Ateta, you don't know what to expect. I do not think it's the right, it was the right choice for us. I felt Arsenal made a big profile manager for a club of their status that can come, attract the best players, and find a way to impose his authority on those players. But then, what do you say to the, those that say Arsenal are doing the United? More or less, mm. more or less, but they have to learn from United's mistakes. Mistakes mm. such as the DNA mistake, mm. the love for the club mistake. You are the one that is saying that is a mistake. United hierarchy thinks they are the right path. I can see, you can't, That's what they you feel. can't deceive yourself to think mm -hmm. you have this plan that you are not sure will work in the next two, three years. When your competitors, City, Liverpool, are pouring money out there and getting the best talents. Yeah, but these two the clubs world. have tried to pour money, especially in United. It hasn't worked. Yeah, but because, so why not try a different time? Because those guys have an hierarchy, a system okay. that works. Okay. United needs to copy let's, that system. Let's leave it at that. It will be interesting to see how things pan out and everything at Arsenal and indeed at United between now <laughs> and the end of the season. Thank you very much. That's our Christmas edition. Before we go, a birthday shout out to a Christmas birthday boy, a huge fan of the show, Christian Anozier. Today is a birthday, Christian. Have a lovely birthday and may this new year be your best year yet.
Best of the rest with Steve Football. Former Newcastle and Crystal Palace boss Alan Pardew has been appointed as the new manager of Dutch Eredivisie outfit Ado Den Haag. The 58 year old who last managed West Brom in April 2018 has been saddled with the task of keeping the team in the league. Ado Den Haag are currently 17th on the law. My name is Dick Germontoy. Thanks for your time. Merry Christmas, everybody. Good morning.